Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone. So, today I'm going to be recreating the brand new horror maze for 2019 at Fort Park Fright Nights, Creek Freak Massacre. Lights. Camera. Action. So yeah, here we go with the start of my very own Creek Freak Massacre recreation. Now this has been a bit of a challenge for me because I've never really done a horror maze recreation like this before. So yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. Um, essentially how I'm starting it is I've got Google Maps up on SketchUp right now. That was a question that a lot of people asked me in the last um, maze video that I did what app do I use? And it's actually a program called Google SketchUp. It's very, very good in my opinion. A lot of architects use it, a lot of like 3D modelers um, use it um, to create basically whatever you want. So yeah, what I've done is I've got Google Maps on there and I've basically mapped out this very basic layout that I drew up in Photoshop on top of the old Logger's Leap station on Google Maps. Um, to basically make sure that the sizing and everything's all good and yeah basically as you can see I'm just bringing up all of the walls from the bottom um, basic layout to create this 3D um, layout and then basically it's gonna be a job of adding details and just layers and layers and layers as big up Sean Sandbrook would say when he's creating something in Planet Coaster. It really is all about the layers like you just add details after details after details. I'm actually doing a little crawl tunnel at this point here. So obviously at the start of the maze you can either go through rotten wood or the good wood. Um, rotten wood you obviously crawled through that very tight little tunnel and good with you went round the side corridor. But yeah, this is exactly what I did with my previous maze design. Like I started from the bottom up and once again, just added layers and layers. If you haven't actually seen that video, I basically designed my very own horror maze layout within the Sora Alive like space. And yeah, that video went down very well. You guys seem to really enjoy it. When I was at Forth actually a few times, some. Um, fairly high up people at Fort Park would come up to me and just like say they enjoyed that video. Some of the maze like designers and tech workers themselves said that they've seen that video and yeah it's just so sick that the people that actually um, work on designing these mazes have seen and complimented that video like it's so so cool um, and yeah I appreciate all of the love that you guys gave that video and yeah you seem to enjoy it so this is kind of the second part of that. Um, I'm definitely looking to do a few more of these kind of videos over close season because obviously it's sad, I know. The theme parks have now closed, so obviously I'm not going to be able to be vlogging at the theme parks as often as I would be. There's still a few winter events going on that I will be hitting up, but obviously there will be a slight change in the videos on this channel over winter. Just. Uh, keep the content coming. Normally in November I take a long old break just because Fright Nights is so manic and Halloween season in general is often a very busy time for me but this year I'm, I'm trying to like carry on the grind. I've really really been hitting YouTube these last few months and I thought you know what I'm still really enjoying it. I'm loving getting like two videos out a week or so so why not just carry it on. So yeah I'm just gonna keep keep doing it for as long as I'm enjoying it really. But yeah, as you can see on screen now, I'm now kind of texturizing the maze, putting the wooden walls in. I do actually change this quite a bit because originally I had the same wooden texture for like every interior wall and it just looked a bit too samey. So um, by the end of the um, video, I will have like loads of different wooden textures and it looks a lot more nice. I will give you a full on tour of this building once this um, building time lapse is done, we'll actually take a look at it real time. But yeah, 
closed season is now upon us and obviously Fright Nights is done, the theme park season's done and what a year it's been like, especially at Fort Park, Fright Nights this year has been a big success I think. As I said, it's, it went so quick but genuinely I would say it's probably one of the best Fright Nights I personally have ever done. I know it's been getting really good reviews, like most people have been enjoying it and yeah I've had a great time. I've been there like most days now that I live down the road I'm literally able to just pop in for the evening and me and Kieran have done that loads of times this Halloween season. But yeah obviously Creek Creek Massacre was the brand new maze for this year and well, I loved it so much that I'm recreating it. This recreation actually took me about 14 hours to do. So I basically just got a load of screen recordings and I added all of the timestamps up and yeah, added it up to about 14 hours. So it, that's a bit mad, like, but I do really, really, really like this maze and it saddens me that we're not gonna be able to get back in it for at least a year now. Obviously, that's presuming it will return, I don't know, but yeah, I think Creek Creek Massacre has definitely been a big success for the park. I think that's what last year they were really missing. They were missing a hardcore, intense horror maze. And obviously, I guess the feedback that they got led them to create the monster that is Creek Creek Massacre. I'm so glad they've they've designed it and made it the way it is. Um, big up the whole team that um, put their minds towards Creek Creek Massacre because it's an incredibly designed maze and then obviously the cast on top of that were like the perfect cast for this maze they were so high intensity and yeah it's just turned out to be one of in my opinion the best mazes Fort Park have ever created um so yeah at this point I'm basically just adding all of the finer details such as all of the Goodwood and Badwood signs and of course the fire exit signs which are essential nowadays in all mazes health and safety in that lot and yeah that is how much into detail I wanted to take this recreation like I wanted every little detail um, the way I actually did this is I have I have two monitors on my desk and on one I have um, Google SketchUp and then on my other monitor I literally have like videos from within Creep Freak Massacre like my own video and like there was others that were filmed on press night and then there's like pictures on Theme Park Guide and yeah they've all really helped me to literally get every single detail into this maze and I'd like to think that it is a near identical recreation obviously there are going to be some bits of theming that I've messed out but yeah as I was doing the maze like throughout Fright Nights I would be looking around and like remembering key bits that I would then create in that sketch up and yeah this is basically the final product so here we have the final product guys the Creekwood Sawmill Home 2 Creek Freak Massacre Unfortunately, the final part of my like creation didn't actually record where I did all of the outside part. Um, it didn't fully record, but yeah, the full exterior of the maze is now done. Um, even got a sign in here, got everything. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take a look inside so we can properly see the layout. So we're gonna delete all of the roofs right now. <laughs> And we're going to head round to the start, where we're yeah going to take a look inside. So yeah, outside of the maze, we've obviously got the little um, batching area. We've got big up Stefan. This is the only high-vis man I could actually find in the game. But that's going to be our Stefan. Big up to him, the senior host of Creek Creek for this year. Absolute legend. Um, so yeah, I had to put him in the recreation because he is a very key part of the maze. But yeah, we're going to start off in the pre-show room. You have to excuse the uh, textures that keep disappearing. Basically, it's a very uh, high poly model, so my computer sometimes struggles to like keep up. And SketchUp basically just compensates for that by making the textures temporarily disappear. But yeah, we've got the pre-show room where obviously the actor will introduce you to the Buckwheat family. And as Tiger would say, take a look at your curriculum vitaes. <laughs> Big up Tiger, absolute legend. Um, and yeah, this is where the pre-show takes place and normally your group will be split down either Rottenwood or Goodwood. For those of you that don't know, there is actually two little actor doors here that take you into the actor corridor, which um, runs next to the Cruel Tunnel. And if you take Goodwood, you're essentially just walking down a parallel line next to the Cruel Tunnel. 
you obviously come out in this little area here where you go through these two um, I don't even know what you'd call them but you have to like squeeze through these like cylinder things and then you come into this clearing where there's the balcony for those of you that haven't been thrown onto the balcony by the actors um, this is actually where it is and it looks over the kind of merging point for the two um, Rottenwood and Goodwood you then head down the corridor. Interestingly, for those of you that don't know, these two missing posters on this wall in this corridor actually can drop down and the actors in the actor corridor on the other side can like put their hands through them and like their heads through them if they so choose. Another thing you might not know is there are actually two actor crawl spaces um, here and here which allow the actors to go from this side of the corridor onto that side quickly so whilst you are walking down and round they can instantly get on the other side so if you've ever wondered how an actor is like seemingly teleported to the other side of the corridor then these two actor crawl holes is how they do it um, this is a really cool bit of theming in the maze in my opinion like with the um, tartan like design um, and the hanging cloths and stuff. You then obviously go up this ramp bit. The amount of times that Luke has done something mad on this bit is... I couldn't even count. Um, so yeah, I'd say this is like one of my favourite parts of the maze actually. Um, it is actually a little ramp to get you up to the higher elevation part of the building. Um, and then obviously you come into the blade room as the sign suggests. Um, where there would sometimes be an actor in this space where the mannequin is but towards the end of Fright Nights they kind of stopped using that. Interestingly the fire exit door is literally here so if you've ever had an e-stop in the maze and you're in this kind of area then you probably would come out of this door and kind of join the queue batching area. You can then walk around here, there's normally a chainsaw actor roaming this part of the maze um, so they'll chase you up and down into here. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed a little windows on the side of this corridor. Um, this black area here is an actor corridor, so only actors in that bit. It gives them access to this corridor here, this corridor here, and obviously this kind of body hanging room. Which, interestingly, there is a door here, which is a fire door, but I've definitely seen actors like use it as a way to quickly get from the blade room into this room, and sometimes. I've even been put back into the blade room through this door, which is always scary because you have to do the chainsaw bit again. But yeah, as we then move down into this corridor here, this is the door that takes you out onto the balcony bit. So sometimes an actor will literally drag you in there, makes you stand on the step of the balcony and you kind of get a really cool view over the start of the maze and they will terrorize you on your own on this balcony for a bit before they then put you back into this corridor where you will come down into kind of like, I think this is called like the drying room. I'm not too sure about that though. Um, but yeah, there's loads of ventilation pipes. And for those of you that might not know, this is actually a really cool part of the maze because if you look down on the floor, there's basically a mesh grating that you walk over. And that is basically where the old Logger's Leap trough still is. And they've literally just put a mesh grating over it. And they've got some lights in the trough that kind of shine up. Um, so you might not have noticed it and also if you ever look up when in this section of the maze There's actually like a mannequin crawling out of the air vents and it's like half mutilated. It's really really creepy um, And yeah, I feel like not many people have noticed that it took me a long long time to I think Kieran pointed it out to me um, But yeah from this point you then go through this flat pier and you are in the very corner of the building at this point and an actor will often tell you to go either into the good wood or the bad wood um, and this is obviously the strobe section of the maze another little cool thing that people might not know is if you look over to the right this window here is where the old loggers leap console still is and it's kind of being turned into an actor corridor now to allow them quick access into the, the mid section of the strobe room um, but yeah, that's a cool thing that some of you might not have spotted when doing the maze. So there are obviously two main routes when doing the strobe section. You can either go this way, or if you get sent this way, then you go around here and you kind of merge in this point here, where there are basically three different routes where you can go, and two of them are dead ends. I remember going with my mum, 
um, and she got stuck down both of these dead ends just getting attacked by a chainsaw um, so yeah this way is a dead end and it's like this dead end cage kind of way um, and then the right way to go is right around here interestingly there is a door here I believe that gives you access back into the blade room if the actors want to go that way um, another little dead end section right here and then you follow this bit out this is an interesting part of the maze actually because this fence right here was never actually in the maze for like the first week or so um, you basically just exited straight away but they did add this fence which means you kind of had to go towards the act with the chainsaws to then run away um, and yeah you then exit out of the maze sometimes if an actor's feeling really mean they will duck out of the strobe section and wait here for you with a chainsaw and you'll get like a double chainsaw finale as you run down the ramp just a few other things to note this is an actor corridor here so if you've ever seen this door next to the door that everyone runs out of that is a little actor corridor that gives the actors access to like the back area of the finale room and then obviously we've got these two big black rooms over here we can presume they are like the tech room um, and some kind of ventilation room because there are loads of pipes coming out of this part of the building so obviously to get rid of all of the chainsaw fumes and stuff and yeah there's probably a tech room in here i presume that basically runs all of the effects and lighting and smoke machines within the maze so yeah, that is my Creek Creek Massacre recreation. It took me about 14 hours, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And you know, it's a fantastic maze, so it's been a pleasure recreating it. I love this kind of thing. I love maze layouts and maze design. And it is something that I would love to get into in the future. So yeah, this kind of stuff is always good practice and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and comment below if you have been through Creek Creek Massacre this year and what you thought of it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for even more videos like this. I also create loads of other Fort Park and Theme Park vlogs and just videos in general. So yeah, be sure to subscribe with the bell icon hit to be notified when I upload. And yeah, Thank you very much for watching this video guys. My name is Jack Silkstone. Goodbye. Here's the bedroom. You've got a smell pot here. Here's the bathroom.